Hey, um, this uh, video is about vulnerability in ecosystems and our goal is to explain what vulnerability is and how um, it affects ecosystems. Uh, by the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to explain what vulnerability is, explain the impacts of natural stress and then explain the impacts due to human induced modifications. So um, the section of um, the syllabus we're looking at is the second dot point. Um, I'm going to look at just vulnerability today and resilience in another um, video. Um, so basically you need to be able to explain what vulnerability is and then obviously the impacts due to natural stress and um, due to human modifications. So what is vulnerability? Well, every single ecosystem, species of life on Earth, whether it be human, animals, plants, is uh, vulnerable to change. Um, every ecosystem is in what's called a state of dynamic, dynamic equilibrium, and this is a, a steady balance of biophysical interactions um, making an ecosystem exist. Um, the problem is, is when change occurs. Now, in nature, when change does happen, with the ex with the exception of like natural hazards, um, change often goes over a long period of time, and because of the long period of time, ecosystems can adapt to that. Now, like I said, all fun all ecosystems are vulnerable, um, but more some ecosystems are at risk than others these are some of the causes of vulnerability location extent linkages to other ecosystems and biodiversity so i'm going to be explaining each one of those now so location location affects the functioning because at a global scale things like latitude altitude distance from ocean determine the nature of an ecosystem um, for example, if we looked at the ecosystems on top of Mount Everest, we wouldn't see as many plant species or animal species as, um, say, um, an ecosystem um, in a rainforest. And that is all due down to where they are closer to the sun, and that's the latitude, the altitude, the height above sea level, and then distance from the ocean. Remember, ecosystems function well when there's a good supply of temperature, and also um, precipitation or water. Too hot, ecosystems don't really, don't really like. Um, also within the local scale, microclimates can affect lots of different ecosystems as well. So we might have a unique individual ecosystem within an ecosystem. A um, good example is Melville Range in Cape York. Um, Cape York is a, an ecosystem in itself, it's a tropical rainforest of Australia, but on this range, obviously because of the height, part of the ecosystem is cut off. As a result, it's a very fragile ecosystem. It's hard to get to um, both, man, by, both by humans as well as by nature because of the range, the height. Um, temperatures are different, precipitation is different, and as a result, the plants and animals that live there have adapted to that vulnerability to change. Now, because this has happened over a long period of time, those animals have made those special adaptations to become um, less vulnerable to living in Melbourne range. So that's what I mean by a microclimate um, creating um, specific ecosystems within an ecosystem. If you um, research some of the um, you know, microclimatic ecosystems, there are some amazing ones around the world. Now, the extent, um, that's how big the ecosystem. Like I just mentioned, Melville Range is very small, therefore it's vulnerable. It's small and vulnerable because it doesn't have like the linkages, it doesn't have um, you know, access to precipitation and sunlight. Whereas big O ecosystems, they have, um, because of their bigger extent, they have higher rates of resilience. And that's how you beat vulnerability by having um, resilience. So the extent of the ecosystem also um, makes the ecosystem less vulnerable as well. Biodiversity is another um, form of uh, part of vulnerability. 
Um, so we look at biodiversity in three levels. <clears throat> the first one I'm going to talk about is genetic diversity. So when we're talking about genetic diversity, we're talking about the makeup of um, species of plants, animals, microorganisms. Um, an ecosystem that has species with strong genetic biodiversity are less vulnerable to change. Um, why is that? Well, because with the um, law of survival of the fittest, the gene and um, the biodiversity that has a bigger gene pool is likely to overcome um, disease, um, traumatic um, events, and also um, we have then different species of that, sorry, different um, biodiversity of that species. Um, so the reason why we have a number of dog species is because they can um, you know, have different mutant mutations of genes, which means that the, bio, the genetic biodiversity is stronger. So when we're talking about genetic diversity, we're talking about the makeup of animals and plants. Um, the more um, diverse it is, the greater it is to cope with um, biodiversity, uh, vulnerability. Another, what I've just mentioned um, quite closely, is species diversities. So species diversity is the measure of the number of species at each trophic level. Remember back from last lesson about what a trophic level, they're the changes in energy. So remember at the lower trophic level, we have more, for example, algae. Um, there are more different, there are more species of algae than they are, say, um, fish. And on top of that, sharks and so on. So the greater the species diversity, the more robust the ecosystem is. The lower the species diversity, the fragile the ecosystem. So that's why dogs, and the reason why I've put the photo in the PowerPoint, because they have lots of species, they've been able to you know, be in every single part of the world, with the exception of Antarctica. So North America, we have coyotes. Um, obviously, um, in Europe, we have um, wolves in Asia and then obviously in Australia we have dingoes they're all part from the same species but they're diverse for a number of reasons um, when ecosystems are diverse there is a range of pathways to ecological processes i.e. nutrient recycling so um, that explains why there are so many diverse um, species around the world um, it also uh, means that if a pathway is des destroyed within that ecosystem, it's more likely to be another path um, making the function of that ecosystem more resilient. A greater level of diversity, the greater chance of adaptation, and hence that's why we've got so many species of dogs. The third um, vulnerability to do with biodiversity is the ecosystem itself. Um, now, when we're talking about ecosystem diversity, I know we said that ecosystems are individual and are, you know dotted around um, the world, but they're not straightforward um, like distinctions. So, for example, if we look at sand dunes, if we look at the Great Barrier Reef, like you know reef systems, um, they do have links to other ecosystems. So, um, if we look at the Great Barrier Reef. We've got um, obviously sand dunes quite close. We've got river systems quite close. Totally different ecosystems, but they do have linkages. Uh, for example, when a river floods, particularly close to the Great Barrier Reef, can increase coral bleaching. Why? Because there's sediment in the water. So linkages and the links with ecosystems to other ecosystems um, is really important in reducing the vulnerability. So an ecosystem like the microclimate ecosystems in Australia and Melville Range, um, because they don't have those links, big changes means it's more fragile. Whereas the greater the bigger in, uh, um, ecosystem is, the more level of interdependence between those ecosystems. Okay, that's an explanation of vulnerability and how um, biodiversity um, extent, size, can all affect vulnerability. All right, thanks. Almost forgot, natural and human-induced stresses. Um, basically, human-induced stresses um, increase vulnerability because 
of the speed that humans have put stress on the ecosystem naturally you know like i said vulnerability every ecosystem is at risk but natural stresses happen over a long period of time therefore they don't create the vulnerability so when we look at that vulnerability natural stress reduces the vulnerability of an ecosystem and your opposite can be said by human induced stress okay thanks